Hello everyone. While you may have not have heard of the smile curve before, it's an important idea in the economics of producing, shipping, and delivering products. It was pioneered by Stan Shee, the founder of Acer Computers. Let's see what this theory is all about and see what it means for engineering managers. Uh, Stan Shee, as I mentioned, founded Acer Computers, and he said that if you're just going to produce products, that's not enough to sustain profitability. The electronics manufacturers must offer many alternatives. So what are they? Well, if you examine the smile curve and some of its history, you could see that uh, if you go back in time to the 1970s, and that's this blue line, blue dotted line, uh, it was much more profitable to ship consumer electronics products. It could be the sole source of an organization's profit, and they did just fine. But over time, you could see this middle point drifting downwards. It became less and less profitable to produce just boxes, just wireless products or consumer electronics products or even automobiles, any type of just box that you would deliver to a customer. Well, the, uh, the uh, profitability of these went down over time. And one of the reasons for it, especially in consumer electronics, was the shift in power from manufacturers to distributors. It was distributors such as Walmart, Best Buy, or many years ago, Circuit City, uh, Radio Shack. All of these outlets could really decide what it is they were going to sell and at what price point. And with a limited number of distributors and a high number of manufacturers, the distributors had all the power. And you know, if you did not comply to their uh, strong pricing constraints, well, they would just move to another player. And, you know, you could go to a Japanese manufacturer, a Korean manufacturer, a Chinese manufacturer, uh, wherever uh, to get the lower price. So you see profitability systematically drifting downward to where we are today, where it no longer makes sense just to ship boxes. <clears throat> so what does, a, what does this mean in terms of the value chain? What do engineering managers need to think about? Well, you see products in the middle here, but upstream, uh, before the product, you have technologies, intellectual property, components, and designs. On the downstream portion, you have got things like know-how, capabilities, services. If you bundle these with the product itself, this is a, a way to enhance the profitability of your company. One way to examine this in detail is to see what major companies have done uh, in this environment, from Samsung to GE to Google, etc. You examine the top 10 consumer electronics companies, for example, and this is dated, this goes back to 2016, but it's probably uh, very similar today. Uh, and also the tech companies and earnings, um, you know, again, probably very similar today. And the Fortune 500 top 10, you could ask yourself, do they supplement their products with services? Was Stan She correct in this case? Well, let's take a look. Apple, for example, consistently has 8 to 10 percent of annual revenues and probably more these days with um, services, which is Mac OS, iTunes, ecosystem, um, Apple Pay, um, whatever additional services you could think of. Also, they get a cut you know, from all the applications developers that are developments that are sold on the App Store. Samsung has Samsung Pay, Samsung 360. Microsoft in 2015 cloud services went way up and it's huge now. Uh, some say that's the main source of Microsoft profitability, the Azure cloud service, but it's also uh, as, as opposed to just sh uh, shipping boxes of software, Microsoft is now selling subscriptions, which is services. GE has t typically made very expensive capital equipment, but 41% of earnings in GE Capital were uh, uh, these are services, financial services, or instead of spending money on a big capital equipment, you could lease it instead. So for engineering managers, uh, when you are examining your uh, technologies, components, product lines, and products, you should ask yourself, in addition to the product, will this project create opportunity to sell intellectual property? Could we have an opportunity to sell components? Could we sell designs? You know, many companies uh, do just that. 
uh, for downstream? Uh, could we offer consulting services? Uh, what other services could we offer to complement uh, revenues and profits of the core product? You know, for example, we have uh, uh, financing, repair and maintenance, or in the case of Microsoft, the product becomes as a service. Okay, you can also examine your core product offering and ask, is the product intended to be the primary source of product and revenue, uh, profit and revenue? Often it isn't. Uh, we can examine, uh, for example, printers versus ink sales. Uh, the printer may not be very profitable uh, to sell, but once you have an installed base of printers, you're, you know, the company's going to make quite a bit of profits on selling the high margin ink. Also, uh, Kindle. Kindle may not be all that profitable, but it is uh, not really a product in on its own. It's a vehicle for selling content, just like razor blade handles are a vehicle for selling blades. Uh, so that's something to think about how you can build on just a product offering with other ideas. Here's an example of what GE does, turning capital expense to operating expense uh, through GE Finance, uh, you're no longer having to buy something outright. You can lease it and then end the lease when you're done and get the next generation of products. Uh, GE Annual Report has services such as the Digital Twin, uh, modeling uh, the equipment that you purchase. So you can run simulations, uh, you know, do some investigation, problem solving, improve maintenance. Uh, car companies, for example, have long been focusing on the financial arm of the business. In fact, in 2003, GM, uh, 818 million came from uh, GMAC, the financing arm of the company. So uh, the automobile companies became so focused on these services, particularly GM, that it was instead of a, a company that made cars, it was really a company that sold money to people over time and they made cars to give them opportunities to sell money and make money off their uh, financing. Uh, so it's very interesting and in fact uh, during this time uh, Wall Street valued the entire automobile manufacturing enterprise at almost zero and all the value of the company came from GMAC. Uh, so there you go. Uh, for future electronics industry research or any industry research, you could examine uh, upstream and downstream of the smile curve, see exactly where your technologies, components, product line, products fit, and figure uh, out ways to build on this profile. Uh, so you can move closer to the ideal, so uh, you could develop what fits for your organization an optimal, um, you know, an optimal uh, smile curve where you can profit on both upstream and downstream. And you know, the aviation industry can do that as well. We at uh, Emory Riddle uh, focus on this and uh, we're interested in seeing um, where the airline industry will go and will the airline industry, the aircraft manufacturing industry, involve both products and services uh, reflecting in the smile curve by Stan Shee of 